Oh, my God. 
your voices this morning in prayer don't lose the intensity barada kosoko bere take the bele da goboro goto gobodo godo eshada baraka tandele ne koso zo goto koro de kinda barata kana bele da gebe gebe gebele de kodo boro koto eshaba da baya da baraka tena bala na kondo so do boko to lo do gondo ko so boro koto bodo goboro koto ida baya de le de gebe 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 kata gebele da kosoko boto ko boro koto gobodo gobodo godo gobodo godo eko barata kandele ne kosha da barada ya irama mama mana mana bala 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 baya da bala 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 eko roko to so ko boko to de bala ne kondo ko so bala de kindia mandala ra ko se ke be ke te ke bala de ko se ke be ya irama da bala baya da bala kandele ne kosha da baya e robo to so ko boko te ke bala ke de ke bala ke di bala 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 Mako barata kenele ne kosho ko boko to ko boro ko do bodo ko do shaka ne mele ne ke mele ke dia e ramba da baya da ke e ko boro to ko no so ko boro ko to no ko boro ko to ko boto ko dia e she mele ke de ke mele de ke de ke de ke mele de ke 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 de Raise your voices in prayers this morning. Candle and a mondo soko boko to. E rebe de bele de ko shaba da bala ka dangele ne ko ne ne mianda. E rebe de ke bele de ke de ko soko be ke te. E soboro ko to. E da bala ba da ba da ba ya da bala ka tanele ne ko no soko boko to ko boro ko to. Ila da ba de bele de ko no soko boro do ko ne dia na kashon na bala na mandelia. E raba da ba da ba la ba ka tanele ne ko soko boto ko boro do ko. Elobo bo shara raba da bala da bara da da na baya na bala bada iraba katane le ne koso ko bagete irobo do re be da bala ga bega da ga bega da ga bega da ga bega da ga bela dia iraba da bala ne eko belia da ka masha da bara da ta iraba baba da ga baya ilobo ro ko to shaka dia enda bara na kane le na mondo so ko bia iraba da bala bada bada bala bada bala baka masha ka bala da ke na bala bada irobo bo ko so ko koto shebala mana mana bala 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 mako barakate shabada bala baka mera bala baya daba ekele ne kosho ko koto rebede bele 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 shaka bala bala come on i pray in this morning i pray in this morning raise the intensity raise the intensity let your voices be loud this morning as we pray boko to soro no bondo ko sonde melia da kande le ne ko shaba da bala kata Reba da shekeliata kura makande kelene kondo sogo goto kondo koboro dogo 
Leko koto kobora doko shaba da ba la ba da ba la ba la ba ka. Riba katale na mande kesende bere doko shaba da ba la ba da. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Philippians chapter one, um, here is Paul in his letter to um, the church in Philippi. He prays for them. From verse nine, he says, "And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge." And all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So we're going to be praying this morning along these lines. Paul prays for them that they will abound in love, they will excel in walking in love, and this will come through knowledge and discernment. Then he says that they will approve the things that are excellent. They will be sincere, without offense to the day of Christ. So we are going to pray for the love work to abound in our midst. The the love of God will abound in our midst. The love of the Father will abound in our midst. Pray this morning. Make that your prayer this morning. That Herod's nation will be a nation of love will be a nation saturated with love that the love work abounds the love work abounds in our midst love abounds in our hearts one to another that love will abound in our hearts love will abound in our hearts it will not be about self it will not be ple- about pleasing self but about serving one another make that your prayers this morning that the love of the father will abound in our midst Konda rada bande ke sege beke teke bele de ko shaba da balakata ire beke teke bele de kende ke sonde beli ata kanda bele ne ko shaba da ba da ba da ba ira ba kate inge gele de ko no soko beko toko beko doko soboro do ko no ko soboro ko to prayers one that desires to walk in love towards another prayers one who sincerely desires to walk in love. That your disposition will always be working in love. That the love work will not be an afterthought for you. It will not be an afterthought for you. We will work in love always. We will work in love always. Nothing will be too difficult. Nothing will be too much. Nothing will be so beyond us that we cannot walk in love. Mandele de ko shaba da balakata, era ba da balakata ke beleke de ke beleke de ke beleke te. No ko roko to shaba da balaba da balaba da ba ya da balakata ne ke le de ko no soko boko to. Rebe de beleke te ke be de ke shaba da balaba ta. Era ba 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 de ke le dianda ko sunda barakata ke le de ko shaba da bata. Rebe de beleke de ke beleke de ke bele de ke. Makadaba ya ndelinia Esha barakata Mako barakate Shebede melekete Ele de geri ya nakona barakata Neke diada Esha badaba daba lakata Rebe bende gelege bege dege belegete Mondo boro do kose kinyanta Ende bele de kosa Balaba daba laba daba laba daba laba daba laba daba laba daba Reke de belekete Isoko boro koto Mako barakate Nabala nakande diada Masha badaba daba ya daba laba daba Ireke teke bele deke beleke to Saba daba laba daba Mako boro koto Soko boro koto Come on you have just two minutes Pray this morning Ilana kandele ne ko shabada balabada mako bereke to shabada balabada ya da balabada iraba katandele ne ko shoko boko to no ko bo erobo bo 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 do bo ro ko to go bo de go bo de bo lo bo de bo lo bo no ko to inda bara da kandele ne ko no ko sonne belia iraba da balabada shaka balakata iraba da balabada bele de bele 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 ke te e ko no ro ko to mashania iraka te e le be de ko so en ka bara ka ti Mashaba da ba da ba da ba la kata ira ba 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 ende bele de ke bele de ke bele de ke bele de ke bele de ko 
Shabada ba ya dabala ba dakata makombe le ne kono koso no boroko to go sombe liata e shabada ba dabada ba labada i raba kate e shebe de bele be de bele beke e robo koto sa akandiata kela na mane ke shembe le ne konde e robo dabola bogo ma shabada ba dabada ba labada ba labada ma kela be de ke de ke to i raba dabala ba ka ma shanda ba dakata ne ke bele ne kono koso ba bolo koto i raba dabala dabada ba dabada ba Shaka tabala na kona kesimba lamada, rebe debele kato, eshe bele dekono kusome beliata, 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 eshe bele dekono
you know, put in more applications. This year, I applied again for to be a part of the of the training program. And I want to thank God for the fact that I was able to go through the application stage, the even the test, the phone interview, the group interviews, and even the final interviews. You now, having gone through all of those stages, I want to give glory to God that at the end of it all, it was successful. Hallelujah. I, yeah, so I got selected to be a part of the MESS training program. Now, I'm very particular about God's work because in the course of the uh, recruitment process, you know, God's word kept coming at, at different direction. Uh, Pastor prayed for me, spoke words over me, and even my squad captain, Pastor Emmanuel, you know, before I traveled for, for the group interview in Lagos, he asked me if I wanted it, that if I want it, I will get it. In my mind, I was like, I've desired this thing for a long time, so I actually really wanted it. And to the glory of God, uh, everything worked out well. Even during the, the interview in Lagos, there was a time where I was like, I wasn't so sure again, but God's word kept coming and you know, strengthening me. And the word miracle came to mind, even while I was at the hotel. I was like, yes, it's, it's the year of miracles, so anything is possible. Hallelujah. Right? So I want to give God all the glory for his word and how that his word made the difference for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless God that success is assured. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to specially thank my father in the Lord and my mother in the Lord. Yes, and I want to thank my captain, starting from Blessing Asiat to I thank, I want to thank them for their sacrifice. You know, initially when I came to Arouse, I was like, young people, I was actually struggling. Well, because God spoke to me and I believed and I thank myself for obedience. I, I have to follow. Initially when pastor when I was about to start the church, he called me and was like, I should come and for the leadership training and all that. Oh, oh, <laughs> but I was not able to meet up. And the next thing, I went for eight, nine month course and everything without giving a word like. But when God wants to do something, he came by himself, told me and I, since then, I've seen the betterment of my life. Not only that, how I can actually be stable in growth. Like nobody is um, running after me. Uh, read your Bible. Uh, do this. Do and I'm enjoying it. And not only that, God has blessed me, being a blessing to people. And there was a case I was handling, <laughs> pastor, friend, and family, and all that. And the wisdom God gave me to <laughs> treat that Hallelujah. day, I'm just like, ah, is in me. I was, I just give God the glory. Hallelujah. Uh, I've not, it's not your one minute. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for help. Since I became a man um, herald, We've not frequent the hospital. Before now, I used to like her every time. The devil came before my birthday, struck me Dara, and then it was a CV. It's even, <laughs> during the ladies' hangout, I was not myself. I was really, really having pains, but <laughs> I don't want to create a scene. Instead, I start dancing, doing a CV. But something was actually going wrong. The next day, it's as if my faith was just going. We should go to the hospital. My dad was down, could not eat, could not. I was like, God, I want to thank God for everything. The next day, I bundled myself, came to um, our um, BIS, and everything was was set to. Hallelujah. It, it, as I said, it has not ended. I went home. I was seeing series of dead bodies all around like and for me being is I prayed. I pray as if I'm not praying. 
It's as if I did not pray. Glory to God. I thank God for for everything. May, may the name of God be glorified for giving me victory. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hi. Up next, um, I'll read the testimony of Stuart Francis Bright, who is over here. He says, Good morning, Vanguard. Good morning, church. I want to thank God for a couple of things. May his name be praised. Amen. Firstly, I want to thank God for growth, both spiritually and otherwise. I see myself doing most things, and I will be shocked by myself because I could remember two years ago I wouldn't do such things. Growth in my life has been evident. Furthermore, he says, I want to appreciate him for my career. Changing a career was one of the difficult things that has happened to me. But here I, am, here I am to the glory of God. I have seen his mighty hands upon me. He keeps leading me every now and then, and I've experienced massive growth in my career and all aspects of my life. I also want to thank God for provisions. Oftentimes, I stand in awe of his goodness in my life. I never lacked anything. Once there is a demand, God provides a supply. May he be blessed. Amen. Finally, I appreciate God for my family, especially my mom. Our health has been perfect. Before now, I continually get drugs for her just to sustain her health. But by my faith in God, I made a declaration that drugs will be the last thing that will sustain her. And I can say that since then, our health has been perfect. Glory to God. Thank you, Vanguard. Thank you, Earth Nation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Um, the Lord has been so good to me. First of all, I want to thank God for um, my health. It has really been a journey. And um, from the beginning of this year, it's from one face to another, from one um, test, scan, hospital, and all of that, paint, different things. But um, doing MMC, first of all, my, my appetite was gone. Like, it's not that I'm not hungry, actually, but the urge to eat, the, I will cook, and I will not be able to eat the food. Like, I've taken drugs to increase my appetite. It's like the drugs are not working and all of that. So, but during MMC, first, when Pastor prayed and I got home, he also gave me his mantle. I used it. Immediately, the appetite returned. I started eating and I began to measure my progress. I saw that after a day, it was like the three weeks I've not been able to eat. I wanted to eat all the food at once. The hunger was coming consistently. I, I, then I discovered that the, the, that was gone. Then the pains stopped. Hallelujah. Sleeplessness stopped. And then the sleepless night stopped. Then, okay, aside that, I, my memories, there are, there are some times that I forget things. There are some things that happened in the past that I cannot recall and all of that. Like a memory loss, something. I spoke to a psychologist and I seek medical advice. I did some stops, but it, it was not working. So, but after the prayers and everything, I tried to remember because before then, I spoke to one of my secondary school mates. He said some things that I totally forgot. Like, I did not even remember at all. So, I tried remembering those things, trying to flashback and i remembered exactly how those things were my memories was restored hallelujah so again i want to thank god for spiritual health spiritual growth um a part of my spiritual life was i can't really put in words to it but whenever i pray there is there's a depth i try to reach into when praying those times when i reach into those those depths i i bring out weakness like I would just get weak. But after the MMC, when I reached him, in fact, okay, when Pastor prayed for me, I discovered that, like, there was there's something that wants to burst forth. So I allowed it, then I started praying. So when I got home, the, the gate was open, and when I reached into those depths, I began to pray like I want to. I, I don't really know. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. All right. Lastly, lastly, sorry. Lastly, Hallelujah. I, I want to thank God for. <laughs> lastly, I want to thank God for provision, uh, financial provision, my family provision, and everything around me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless God for the testimony. Next, I'll read this from Steward Mfonisho Apan. She says, Good morning, my lovely vanguards. Good morning, church. My name is Mfonisho Apan, and I'm going to be sharing with everyone my testimony. Praise God. First of all, I want to thank God for my life and the wisdom for daily living God has provided for me. I used to have a very vague picture of life, and so many questions were on my mind. But the one that really mattered was, what is life about? I got a very long answer from God, and I thank him for this because it has guided me in so many ways. I have been able to apply the answer I got to my daily life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank God for my health. It's, the one thing, it's one thing to live life, and it's another thing to live a healthy life. I'm thanking God for my physical health because two weeks before MMC, I was battling with pains in my stomach and a very funny kind of fever. My tummy used to really hurt, and because of this, I couldn't wear anything that would add pressure on my belly. During these times, I couldn't eat well and eventually lost weight. I mean, I could go without food from morning to night and I would still feel filled. But the weakness from not eating anything was there. I couldn't smile well at people too because whenever I tried to smile, my tummy would hurt really bad. I had talked to my friend about what I was going through, and she said she had experienced the same symptoms when she was being diagnosed with ulcer. When I heard this, I felt bad and it got worse when I, got, when I heard the old treatment process for ulcers. Since the day I had a conversation with my friend, the pains got worse, and all I used to say during the times the pain was severe was, God, I need my health to serve you. Help me. I remember crying on the last day I was supposed to pray for two hours concerning MMC. Man, I was sober and I got comforted by the Holy Spirit as he told me, MMC is for you. Take advantage of it. Know very well that God is good and sickness is bad, so it cannot be from God. It came to be on that Friday, the first day of MMC, while Vanguard was preaching, he said that many sicknesses are the oppression of the devil in the body. An alarm just blew off in me as if to say that, yes, this is an oppression of the devil. And immediately, I got so angry in my spirit and I started speaking words directly at the demons that were causing the oppression. After Pastor laid his hands on me and prayed for me, I kept praying and praying because I was very confident that I was healed. While I was praying, I felt someone tap me and say, go and drink water. So I went drank water and to my surprise i finished a whole sachet then i wasn't feeling any pains afterwards which hadn't been possible for the past weeks before mmc i was overjoyed and i still am since that day till now and even till forever the pains are gone the fever is gone my beloved appetite for food has returned now i can smile well at people when i greet them God is good, she says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next, we have this beautiful testimony from Steward Wisdom Patrick. He says, praise the Lord, church. One word that would describe how I am still here standing, regardless, would be miracle. I want to express my gratitude to God for first seeing me through my service year. I felt like I really started this year. But all I can say is that I have enjoyed God's goodness and favor. A lot has happened to me in the last few months, and I want to thank God for stability. A very big thank you to my vanguards for the teachings and instructions. This season, more like a test run of all I have learned in staying fervent. And indeed, I must say that God has been faithful to me. I literally hear vanguards teaching while studying. I also thank God for the gift of a wonderful squad captain and ministry head, Pastor MK, who has been amazing throughout this season. To everyone who checked up on me in prayers, calls, and gifts, I am grateful. Even as even I, as I'm ready for the next phase of the miraculous, glory to God. 
Glory to God, church. Yeah. Right, this is from Steward Uka Nwagbara, a post MMC testimony also. He says, good morning, sir. I sent this to the Vanguard. Vanguard, sir, maybe it's the first miracle, but I don't know. I've had a knee condition since 2019, 2020. I excused it as something I got from my mother's genes because she also had a knee condition. The knee condition made me stop working out, especially jogging. It could hurt so much that I'll just need to stop and wait for a bit of relief from the pain. As you spoke this evening, that was MMC, I sensed that my mindset, it's a genetic condition, was one of the ways I allowed Satan hijack the situation. I repented immediately. I had adjusted my mind to live with the condition since it is hereditary. But no, not after hearing your words this night. When your hands came on me, I literally lost sensation on my knees. I just couldn't feel my knees, sir. Sir, as I type this, the knee condition is completely gone. Like, it is not slightly there anymore. I have confirmed again and again to be sure seeing a miracle. Sir, I am healed. Thank you, Vanguard, sir. Hallelujah. He says, this is my first mighty miracle this season. I'm so excited. I am healed. Glory to God. And this is from Steward Blessing Nelson. She says, good morning, church. First of all, I want to thank God for the gift of a good local church. It will be an understatement to say that we are just lucky. We are blessed with the blessing of our vanguards, and I am grateful for that. Come on, celebrate our vanguards this morning. Secondly, I'm grateful to God for this month of August. This is the month God added a year to my brother and also to my father, who has been in such good health that it amazes me every time. Tomorrow, God also adds a year to my life, and I'm grateful for that. I remember the confusion I was in at this time of my birthday last year. I see the clarity and purpose God has given me, and I am grateful. I see the place God has blessed me with. I see the peace God has blessed me with, and I am grateful. My father says, if you can't think, you can't think. I have come to say thank you, God. I see what you're doing for me, and I'm not ungrateful. I literally took supernatural boldness to the next level, and I've been doing this month by the power and strength of God. It has been my reality since the month began. The just concluded MMC was for me, as God opened my eyes to see things which he still gave me victory over. I'm here to give all the glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the final one is from Pastor MK. He says, it is Testimony Sunday again. And I bless God for yet another privilege to testify before his people. I want to give all thanks to God for saving me and keeping me. I want to thank him for giving me a local church that is concerned about my life and that is a source of comfort, maturity, and sanity for me. I thank him for the vanguards who are God's men and an anchor for us in this world. I thank God for my family, my relationship, my squad, my ministry. God has been good. Hallelujah. I also want to bless God for the months of June and July. I saw God's hands upon me greatly in provision and in preservation. From July until this August, I have seen more of this. God has led me to do so much more. And I give him all glory for strengthening my arms to be able to carry all that I carried. Today, I kneel and testify ahead before God's people for the new jobs, new gadgets, and new level God is bringing my way. All the glory to him alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet this morning as we receive the Vanguard's blessing over these testimonies. El Shaddai. El Shaddai, Elohim and Allah, age to age, is still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. Oh, 
the God of glory the God of wonders God so powerful the Lord of hosts thank you for the blessings of your people the past month and even beyond thank you for the beautiful testimonies again that we have listened to this morning proofs that you are with us Proves that your bar is always answering to our needs. Lord, we stand as a congregation this morning and we say thank you. We say thank you for blessing us, for giving us sound health, for healing our sick bodies, for giving us direction, for giving us provision, for never leaving us without help. Thank you for the lives that you have transformed and you are still transforming. Thank you for the people you have built and you are still building. Thank you for the corrections and the adjustments that you are making to our lives. Thank you because these things are showing. Your blessings are showing. Your goodness is showing. Your power is showing. Lord, we give you glory and praise. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. And show your amen is very loud. Amen. Father, we thank you for Eras Nation. You have helped us. I help in ages past and hope for years to come. We stand as a congregation and we say, Be thou glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning again, Lord, we pray over the testimonies that they are permanent in the name of Jesus. Amen. The healing that we have received. The conditions that were taken out of the way, they will never come back in the name of Jesus. Amen. The miracles, the blessings we enjoyed, the preservation, the direction, all the beautiful things we enjoyed, they stay with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, Lord, over the house, we multiply the same in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray that these testimonies are multiplied over the house in the name of Jesus. Amen. People still struggling with stomach issues, struggling with different parts of their bodies and health. This morning I declare the hand of God will come upon you for sound health in the name of Jesus. His hand will come upon you for speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. Declare over those that are losing their way. Those who have lost direction and focus this morning. By the hand of God I reposition you on the path of purpose in the name of Jesus. If you have been feeling tired and wearied about life, if you have been feeling confused, if you have been feeling like you don't know where to go next, this moment, I shine the light of God to your path in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I declare that you begin to enjoy direction. Amen. The agencies of help that will put you on the right path begin to come your way now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. declare over you that you will enjoy the abundant resources of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you enjoy the provision of God. In the name of Jesus, you will never be without help. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Give you all the glory because this and more will receive over this house from now and even beyond. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many of us are excited this morning? How many of us are excited this morning? Come and lift a shout to Jesus this morning. Lift a shout to Jesus this morning. Somebody say, I have the life of God. I have the life of Christ in me. Hallelujah. If 
Father, we bless you for the life of God, for your life in us. I'm the image of a loving God. He gave me a priceless gift, the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, through me. Through me, God is with me. I am saved. I am saved. Eternally in Christ. I'm the image, 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 I'm the image,
house of God. The life of God. For what? Share it. For what? For what? For what? For what? For
about it. Be bold about it. their way, they begin to find purpose again. Amen. Those whose hearts are filled with sorrows, some of you don't know why you are just down. You, you have not been able to place your hand on anything, but you've just been down. You've just been low on confidence. You've been low on motivation. No excitement in recent times. You're just living one day after the other. Maybe you can even trace it to some experiences you had in the last few months that have seemed to shape this present time for you. In this moment, there is a restoration. Amen. A restoration of joy. Amen. Some of you, you, you started the, the, the year and the last few months with high hopes. Hopes were high. But it seems in the last few days, the hopes are drowning. No more hope. Your thinking, your expectation is being watered down. And it seems time is the one watering down those expectations. There are things you've been expecting. And those, those, those hopes seem to be drowning in the pool of time. They are not happening. The Lord is saying there's a restoration of hope now. Yeah. And you will believe again. You will believe again. You will have self-belief. You will have faith as you used to. Because God needs that positive spirit around you. To be able to do the things he wants to do. Hope is being restored. He says, hold on to your hope. 
let it not drop because in your positivity that which you desire will come Amen. said abraham didn't stagger the promise of god through unbelief was strong in faith your hope is restored Amen. your hope is renewed Amen. and that which you are hoping for that confident expectation of yours the lord says is coming shortly Amen. It's coming shortly. Amen. Just give him glory this morning. Raise your hands and bless his name. is worthy of praise. Father, we thank you. Worship you for the life, the expression of hope, the expression of joy and peace that we have in this place this morning. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory and praise. Some of you that have lost your peace in the last few days. You lost your peace because of certain steps that you are taking and then you are wondering is this it because those steps are looking big they're looking big they're taking certain steps that are looking very big you're, you're thinking to yourself am i sure that i'll be able to sustain this the lord is giving peace to you Amen. even as you move forward he's saying that's the right step go for it go for it and the peace is restored peace is restored for some of you have lost peace in certain relationships in your life the last few months has been rough it's been rough it's been rough the lord is saying peace is restored Amen. peace is restored Amen. that things go back to how they used to be Amen. because you need those relationships for certain things that god is bringing you into in the coming weeks father we thank you we give you glory and praise Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Morning church. All right, go around and welcome someone to church this morning. Say welcome the church. Welcome the church. Are we so ask them. Is it working? All right. Thank you. All right. Second Corinthians three ministering the spirit part two quickly this morning let's put our hands together and celebrate our online audience those who have joined us in this place this morning we celebrate you thank you for joining us ministering the spirit part two father this morning as we go let there be light in your world let there be understanding let there be revelation knowledge of your person of your spirit and let our hearts be awakened to the ministry of your spirit in our midst this day and we align ourselves to that ministry for productivity in life and destiny lord every doubt here is dispelled darkness is sent out through the light of your word at the end everybody will be strong in revelation knowledge of your spirit in jesus name we are prayed Amen. All right, Second Corinthians three, verse one. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need as some others a piece of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the earth verse 4 let us read verses 4 to 6 together as a church we want to ready go and we have some trust toward god are we there let's read together as a church we want to ready go and we have some trust through christ toward god Letter, but of the spirit, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. Amen. So last week we began to look at the ministry of the spirit and ministering the spirit. The first thing we did was to do a clarification and to say that the ministry of the spirit was the work of the spirit to us. And when we say to us, we are not just referring to believers, we said to the world. We said to the world. 
and then to us because we were first of the world but now we are no more of the world we are in the world but we are not of this world we are of another race so the ministry of the spirit to the world is salvation but to us it has things pertaining to sonship things pertaining to sonship things pertaining to our nature the ministry of the spirit the work of the spirit that's what we said and then we now said ministering the spirit is now the delivery of the spirit to as many as need the spirit and we are those that need the spirit those who have not received the spirit everybody must receive the spirit because the spirit is god's plan for every man god desires all men saved god's plan was to have all men receive the spirit all men be his son his children so the ministry of the spirit is to ensure this ministry the spirit is we ensuring this so the ministry of the spirit we said is the gospel and the offshoots of the gospel whereas ministering the spirit is the preaching of that gospel so when paul says we are ministers of the new covenant he is referring to our activity what we are delivering we are preaching the message of the new covenant we are preaching the message of the gospel the message of the gospel is the message of the new covenant the new covenant founded in the blood of jesus the new covenant which paul calls immediately the covenant of the spirit he says not of the letter but of the spirit he said this covenant this ministry is the ministry of the new covenant and this ministry of the new covenant is not of the letter it is of the spirit so we began to look at the explanations of the spirit we define the spirit to be presence and what and what influence we said those two definitions are very key if you can understand those things you are closer to spiritual realities when you can get that spirit's presence and influence you're closer to spiritual realities that means you can you have the right knowledge to relate with spiritual verities then we began to look at the spirit of god we explained the distinction not the separation from the spirit of god from god god and the spirit are not separate they are only distinct they are not apart from each other they are only different in features but they are of the same that is why the holy spirit of god is god himself go to acts chapter 5 in acts 5 peter makes a statement even though he's making the statement in judgment in acts 5 when ananias and sapphira lied to peter look at how he referred to it verse 1 but a certain man named ananias with sapphira his wife sold the possession and he kept back part of the proceeds his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet but peter said ananias why has satan filled your heart to lie to the holy spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself so in verse 3 peter says you lied to the holy spirit you lied to the holy spirit now see verse 4 while it remained was it not your own and after it was sold was it not in your control why have you conceived this thing in your heart you have not lied to men but to god so fear equates lying to the holy spirit to lying to god so like i told you the holy spirit and god they are not separate they are just distinct 
distinct in operation, distinct in role and functionality, distinct in features. But they are of the same. So the Holy Spirit of God is God himself in another form. The Holy Spirit is God himself in what? Another form. So he is not different from God. He only shows us about God or tells us about God in a different light. So I told you that in redemption or primarily in God's eternal plan is where we have the feature of Father, Spirit, Son. And I did that distinction clearly. I don't want to say it because I have, I have to feel myself so much. So if you miss Wednesday, get a teaching for Wednesday. I made a clear distinction of the Father, Spirit, and Son and how that the three of them are God but in different forms. And I said that mankind is supposed to be a part of the Trinity. And everyone that is born again now is a part of that Trinity. We are the human representative. We are the human face of God. Hallelujah. Are you getting that? We are the human representative. We are the human version of God. The human face of God. Just like Jesus was the human face in the Trinity. Now that we have come into him, he is that last Adam. And we are of that order. So we are in the Godhead today. Tell me, say, I am in the Godhead today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I give you some definitions. I explain to you who the Holy Spirit is. I said it's the gift of who? The Father to his people. To initiate and complete the building of the body of Christ. Remember that? Remember that? All right. So we are looking at this person. He is God, but he is unique in personality. He is a personality, a divine person. And he possesses the mind. He has the emotions. And he has the will. He is just like God. He is of God. So Peter says, you lie to the Holy Spirit. Why are you lying to God? Because the same thing. He is everywhere. He is omnipresent. Like his popularly said. Omnipresent means he is everywhere. Look at David's words in Psalms 139. Psalms 139, present everywhere, just as God is everywhere. Psalms 139, verse 7. Psalm 139, verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, build, you are there. So, it refers to the fact that the Spirit of God is everywhere. Omnipresent. Everywhere. And that is why he is always there for you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is always there for you. Tell your neighbor, say the Holy Spirit is always there for you. Many times we don't know. So we try to live life on our own. We try to run through life on our own. Just a gentle whisper. Just a pause to check. Spirit of God, what are you saying? The Holy Spirit gave me a prompting. Gave me a nudge. It's not an old school statement. So I just had this impression. We had our parents, particularly the older generation, use those phrases frequently. Saying the Holy Spirit told them they got this impression, this direction from the Holy Spirit. Before you do anything, ask the Holy Spirit. He is everywhere. He is with you always. And He's there to help you. He's 
God helps you. So he is omnipresent everywhere, always there, always available, always available for you if you will recognize his presence. If you will acknowledge his presence. You see, we live in a day and age where people we are too filled with the so much we have to do in life that you are used to making decisions on your own. If you are being like that, stop it. You are praying and you are not even listening to the Holy Spirit. You are just praying so that you can finish praying. You are not praying to receive direction. Not praying to receive impressions, strong impressions. The things that God wants you to do or not do. So He is there. Acknowledge His presence. He is there with you. When you pray, He is there. When you are asleep, He is there. When you wake up in the morning, He is there. He wants to give you the first set of instructions. The moment you wake up, you say, oh, I'm late for work. You jump out. First thing you do is to consult your phone. What's the latest? What did I miss all night? What are my, the messages I missed? You go to WhatsApp. You first check from last night to this morning. That's the first thing I missed. What's the latest? How about you ask the Holy Spirit, what's the latest this morning? What's going to happen in the world today? Let me know. Before we step out, how prepared are we? Tell me. Give me an idea. And that takes us to his next feature. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows everything. 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 Somebody say everything. First Corinthians 2. Let's see. We are unveiling the personality of the Holy Spirit. That's where we are in our study. We said the details of the personality of the Spirit promised. So we are still unveiling the Holy Spirit because that is where you can know who you are ministering to people. And that is where you yourself can benefit from it. First Corinthians 2. From the seeds, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the readers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified what the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor heard. Heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. He's talking about salvation plans there. Isaiah 64, verse 4. Verse 10, that God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. Somebody told us how she was praying that she was entering some death. I beg, be careful. Where, where Sandra, where you are? You know, go. There's a range of deaths. I said, Lord, take me there too. I want to get to this desk, but I don't know where the deaths are. So I began to wear rain, rain boots so that when you enter into the depths, you will not, you will not get stuck in the depths. The deep things of God, the deep things of God there refers to the wealth of the things that God has. Not really about the depth in terms of some very mysterious things. The Greek word bathos, B A T H O S, refers to the volume, how much the wealth of knowledge that is at the disposal of God, that God has at his disposal. So he said, The Spirit does what? Searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. The amount of the amount of information available to God that many don't know. So when you refer to depth, it's not really that there are strange depths. Now it can be depth or height. If you look at the word very well, it can be depth, can be height. So it's not referring to some set thing. It's referring to how mag magnificent, how big, how much the extent of God's knowledge. That is referring to that. How far God's knowledge reaches. He said the deep things of God. God knows all things. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God, God knows, knows all, things. all things. 
So, he says, the Spirit sets you all things, yes, the deep things of God, the wealth of knowledge that God has, the extent of what God knows. We don't know the extent of what God knows. We don't know. But he says his spirit knows. For what man knows, verse 11, the things of a man, except the spirit of the man which is in him, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So look at the two. He, he says, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. But in the first verse, he had said, the things of God are deep things. They are many. They are much. There is so much that God knows. There's a wealth of knowledge that God has that is endless. That means there is no question that you cannot find an answer to in God. So if you wake up in the morning and you ask the Lord how the day will be, He can tell you and He will tell you because He knows. Hallelujah. Because eternity is just before Him like a day. And that is how the, the realm of the spirit is. The realm of the spirit is a timeless realm in which events are sequenced. Events are sequenced like that in the spirit. So what now ensures that events in the spirit come to happen is now the cooperation of human activities with the spiritual foundations that have been laid for those events. That means the things that God has said, he has said to them in the spirit realm because that is where things are encoded. That is where things are fixed. What we do, physical activities are just building on spiritual realities. So the moment that spiritual or physical activities now coincide with spiritual realities that have been set in a timeless realm, the moment that happens, we now see the manifestation of it in the physical. I hope I'm not speaking too much grammar for some of you. The words that God has spoken about your life, they are spiritual in nature. And they are, they are there. In a timeless realm. Are you following the timing of the fulfillment is the timing of your physical response to God's word. The timing of the manifestation and expression of what God has said about you is when you cooperate and agree to what God has said. But in the realm of the spirit, there are no issues. There are no timelines. Because that realm is a timeless realm. It is the realm in which things are settled. So if I want to see the things that have been settled about me, I need to know what part I need to play. My cooperation with what God has said. When it will now happen, the manifestation of it will now be when a physical activity aligns with that spiritual reality. Do you understand that? For example now, when... Jesus was going to be born. When he was going to be born, a physical, look at the book of Luke, chapter 2. Look at Luke. I don't say look at Luke. What? Look at it that way. Luke 2. Luke 2. So like I taught you last weekend, I taught you about how that there are certain spiritual activities and forces and beings that govern events, world events. One of such is what I want to show you now. Verse 1, Luke 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Verse 4. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. 
because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was the child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth as firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, you might call this coincidence, but no, it is not. Prophecies and words had gone before this time that the Savior must be born in Bethlehem. Micah the prophet spoke about it in Micah 5. In Micah 5, you see that he must be born in Bethlehem. Micah 5, verse 2. So is what, you, what is Micah? Is a car, Mikra. Ibadokas. Praise God. Micah is a book in the Bible, a prophet. Some have never heard Micah's name before. Now you hear it courtesy of me. Verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, a father, you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. So the word came for the Messiah. He will come out of Bethlehem. But the one carrying the Messiah was far away in Galilee. She had to leave the region of Galilee to Bethlehem. Now, did she really know the prophecy? Not really. Because she would have been deliberately saying, What is when is my EDD? I don't know what's called EDD. You don't know. No, oh, it's not your fault. The mother was raising their hands. Edidion. <laughs> I feel pity for you. It's almost your turn. That's it. Ah. EDD. The mother was raising their hands. It means expected day of death. What? <laughs> expected date of delivery. Or expected delivery date. Anyone you like. That means there's a day, there's a timeline. A child should be about 39, 40 weeks. A normal child. He's 42 weeks. He has the wisdom of the aged before he was born. He's 37 weeks. I don't know. He's weak. Or 35 weeks or 34. Some of you are born like that. Don't worry. You are here at least. So, so ah, when, is, when is my EDD? So it is so and so date. So Joseph, oh yeah, pack your things. We must go to Bethlehem because they said I must give it to him there. No. She didn't even have such understanding of the prophetic. But because it was time for the fulfillment of the word that had been programmed in the spirit realm, something political arose. And I can assure you, it had a spiritual hand. Something must have moved Caesar Augustus to call for a census. Luke said it was done before, but it was in the days of Corinius. So, in a way, he just woke up. That's how you would call it. He just woke up. I said, everybody, go to your to your to your places and go and be counted. Just so that the word of God can be fulfilled. Don't forget what I'm explaining. The prophecy had gone forth. In a spiritually timeless realm. If that did not happen then, God knows. Jesus will say, I'm not coming out until we get to Bethlehem. Say, it's nine months. When am I going to go to this child? Jesus will say, I'm, I'm not coming. We must go to Bethlehem. But so that the prophecy can be fulfilled, at that time, a physical activity had to align with the spiritual reality that was already in the spirit realm so that 
the prophecy can be fulfilled. And that is how prophecies are fulfilled. Some people are carrying prophecy. 20 years prophecy. He keeps carrying the prophecy. He is waiting for how it will be fulfilled. You have a participation in it. Either you deliberately move or you are moved. Sometimes someone moves you and that movement is a fulfillment of prophecy for you. Sometimes you are aware. Sometimes you don't know. Like this one now. Many didn't know. They just say, yeah, move. And through that, prophecy was what? Fulfilled. So, God lives in that timeless realm where he knows tomorrow. He knows what actions you should take today that will lead to the fulfillment of prophecy. You know, you ought to fulfill the prophecies of God in your life. Of Danny Boy, you tell Danny, shake their shoulders and neighbor. Are you still here? It's a prophetic neighbor. It's time to fulfill certain prophecies in your life. Tell them that show and say it's time to fulfill certain prophecies in your life. So, you ought to wake up every day hoping to bring the word of God in your life to pass. All the blessings you have declared over you, the word you have spoken over you, they need to start finding expression. So when you wake up in the morning, you can ask the Lord, how's today going to be? What opportunities present themselves to me today? What should I avoid today? Who should I avoid today? You know, you wake up in the morning and you tell, see that your colleague at work. Ensure that you don't spend more than two minutes talking to them today. And I don't know why. It's until you spend five minutes talking to them that you now know that. Ah. No wonder he was telling me. Now, you don't have to spend five So You know, you know the, 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 the mistake we make many times in spiritual direction is that we want to test and see what will happen. Sometimes when you don't leave, you tell the story. Are you guys what I'm saying now? Yes. Like I say, ah, so that thing. God says, don't go to it, please. Now, don't go. Then don't try to... Now, most times when you don't go, you don't know what God has saved you from. But sometimes you want to know what God has saved you from. <laughs> but when you go and you now enter that trouble, you now value God more. You don't need, and that's why you see, many people miss spiritual direction. They miss it. Do you know how many times God has saved you without you even knowing? You don't know, right? So you don't really value it. Those simple instructions, don't go, go, stop, don't go out yet. But you want to put your, your hand into that problem. If, if the Lord says, don't talk to that colleague for more than two minutes today, do it. Don't try to find out what will happen if you do or if you don't. Don't be too curious. If the Lord says don't do it, don't do it. Say what are you going to do? What will happen? Do it now. Then we'll see. That specific. When you refer to the knowledge of God, it is specific. God is not some grandmother that says, ah, well, when you are going now, don't, don't cross the road. Which road? Lord, which road? He knows. Because there is a sequencing of activities in the spirit. You see accidents, you see all those things, they are programmed in the spirit. You don't believe, don't worry. I won't say you should have your own accident so that you can understand. When you hear there are blood testing demons, it is true. There are accidents programmed to happen on certain days, on certain roads. And it might have a political hand behind it. There are people that they told you need certain number of people's blood. For this campaign you want to run say okay which road are we going to use so and so road and then the lord says don't go that day say lord which road this particular one because they finish work there it's the same in negativity so how will that work come to be when people move through that road this is what i told you physical activities now bring to pass what has been programmed in the spirit. I wish you guys really understood how the spiritual realm works. You have a very beautiful, seamless life, no stress. 
he will cooperate with God. Listen. So he is omniscient. He knows everything. That means don't be tired of asking him questions. God doesn't get bored with your questions. God doesn't say you are asking too much questions. If you, if, if you ask too much and God will tell you, he can tell you, just don't worry, just trust me, go on. But if you say, Lord, if you ask God again, you will not say, ah, why are you asking again? You're asking too much. He's your father. So don't be tired of asking God questions. Lord, should I? Are you? I just want to be sure. There's no harm in being sure. That's how to follow God. He knows everything. Glory to God. He has the details. He knows the details. He can tell you what to wear that day and what not to wear. You know some people, it's their clothes that put them in trouble. It's what they were wearing. Saw them from the back. They say, ah, that's what I've been looking for now. You look like him. Popularly, they say when you wear black, you run into a risk more. That day you were going through plaza. He said, don't wear this black clothes. Say, ah, why? What is there? Can't I what I like again? Don't wear this black. But as you wear it, as you enter plaza, four boys just surrounded you. Yeah, uh, but uh, we know you now. <laughs> uh, where, where do you know me from? You don't know me. I don't know you. I uh, know we know you. We know you. Uh, are you not? They just go for one story, and then you'll be they'll be convincing you, and then you two, you want to agree that uh, I think that's me. <laughs> you know, they will tell the story to you, and you will want. I think, I think, are they, are they right? I think they are true. They are saying the truth. So we know you. Is it not you that uh, your sister is, your brother is? I thought about working in familiar streets. They will pick those things. Uh uh, you just finished from so and so now. Are you not the one staying at hostel? This block, this. And never you know what's happening. By the time you finish talking to them, you are going. Your phone, you cannot find it again. <laughs> your wallet, gone. Those are people like that. As they are talking, the ones that the ones pulling out the, the piece of your body, they are so good that you will not know. By the time you are leaving, when you suspect that, ah, come on, virtue has left me. <laughs> But he wants you. Don't wear that clothes. As simple as that. Don't wear that clothes. Some people got themselves into trouble by visiting certain places. By wearing certain clothes. Even females. You, you are dressed in a promiscuous manner and then the eyes of the boys could not leave you. And then they arrange something for you. They gave you breakfast. Served you hot. And then you are coming to cry to God. He will listen to your cry. I trust him. He will comfort you. But whatever you have lost, you have lost. So please listen to God. He has all the details. I'm not talking about a vague God that will just give you surface, surface thing. If, if he gives you a surface instruction, if you ask more questions, you will go deeper. So, is it perfect? Go deeper. You ask the, go deeper. Deeper. Is it major? Go deeper. Deeper. If you ask level one question, he will answer you. You say, Lord, I want more details. He can tell you where to work, where not to work, which contracts to accept, which ones to not accept. Who to be friends with? Who to not be friends with? Once they come into your life, you are finished. Until they get out, you cannot make progress. Until they are out. They are like Jonah. Jonah carrying people that have gone contrary to the plan of God. Hallelujah. And in your life, don't, don't be in that kind of company. Don't be with someone that is walking contrary to the will of God. You see, when you are with someone walking contrary, contrary to the will of God, the doom that is coming on them, you are going to be a partaker of it. And God, let me not say God should help you. The devil is going to help you. The devil should not help you. You should not give them advice on how to even walk the wrong path. You will share in their condemnation. It's all learning this morning. Yes, sir. There are some people, you see, when you, when you come into your life, ask them, please, where are you coming from? Who have you offended? Okay, 
is that serious? Look at Jonah. He had the world contrary to the will of God. Then innocent people in the in the ship. God said, Go to me, they said, No, I will not go. Then join the ship of innocent people and storms began. He didn't stop there. They were losing things. Bible didn't say that Jonah things were thrown were thrown into. I hope he had anything. <laughs> because when the ships, when the fish followed him, followed him alone. This is all his properties. If God was going to present, he should have his his um and luggage should have followed him into the belly of the fish. But no, only him. The ones that had luggage, they were throwing their luggage into the ocean or into the sea. For the one that probably doesn't have luggage. And that's what we So we will throw away very strong directions in life for someone that doesn't have direction. You go into a relationship, he doesn't know where he's going to in life. Then you that you are carrying purpose, you are a man of purpose or woman of purpose. You are full of purpose. You carry yourself to go and meet a man that doesn't have purpose. Just like they were throwing their baggage to the ocean, they will end up carrying the purpose one by one, one by one, one by one, until you are like them. Because that's what they thought. They said maybe because the ship is too heavy. Let's make it light. Some of that in your life, they are so empty that they reduce you to their emptiness. When they come into your life, they, they will so, it's sometimes it's not even consciously, sometimes it's conscious, some of them are agents of darkness. They will come for you, they will give you a kind of counsel that you say, I have that thing, I don't think you should do it. It's, it's not too stressful. No, 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 they are taking you for your right. Drop it. You drop number one, number two, number three. Until you compare your life on their own, I say that ah, we are on the same level now. <laughs> so when people are come to your life, ask them questions, where are you coming from? Where have you offended? Who has cursed you? Have they cursed you? Are you coming with a curse? Yes. Are you coming with a new offend? That place they curse on you. Did you cheat someone? Those of you that go into relationship with someone that has broken about 10 ladies' hearts. <laughs> he has broken, 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 broken hearts all over the place. So he's called broken hearts. He has broken many hearts. And with each heart that he was breaking, they were, they were donating courses to him like this. They were donating. And because you, you cannot see anything else, you cannot see that causes are attached all over the person. Then you go and carry that person. Say, oh, don't worry. I accept you for who you are. Don't worry. I know you have made mistakes, but I love you. No new love. See, I told you, people that are in love, they don't used to think. I've told you. And that's the truth. When you are in love, outsiders can think more than you. I'm talking by express too. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I'm talking by express. They'll be telling you, look at the beach there. Look at the beach. Don't go. <laughs> so you have to guess my progress. I've always known you. I know you don't like that guy. I've always seen you. You don't like him. That's why. I've always known. It's because you just don't like him. There's nothing wrong with him. Look at what he's doing now. He's even trying to be your friend. I don't want friend. Not sense friend. You say, oh, don't worry. I accept you the way you are. Even though you have offended many, but the blood of Jesus yeah. has covered all. Hallelujah. Then you go and carry someone that has broken many hearts, has stolen money from people, has cheated people. Some people, the, the problems they are carrying today come from those things. And I was a mini deliverance. As well, over the last weekend, we delivered you from a lot of things. You will be done. If there are still some left, we find another time to deliver you. As I told you last week, MMC, the three days were for deliverance. As I was laying hands every day, removing things. And as the hands come, I receive all trans, I speak those words because they will go out by those words. 
Some people are carrying curses. Some relationships are that you, you, must not, you must not love him, no matter how good he is, until he goes and the, the ground washes his head somewhere. You must not come close to him because he has offended too many people. He has broken hearts. He has cheated people. And you see, in this life, oh, I don't know why I'm going this direction. There are people you can cheat and there are some you must not try to cheat. There are people that you can do things and get away with it. But there are some. <laughs> it will wait for you. The day it will land, people will, people will pity that person. I say, ah, if you had known, you would not have crucified a lot of glory. <laughs> you wouldn't have done it. So you, 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 you the cheater or cheat or what is your name? Keep cheating. Cheat people. Think you are smart. Those that collect phones and all of that, you think you are smart? There are some phones you can collect and get away with it. There are some you, you will collect. You will still collect after. <laughs> after you collect, you go collect. You will not have peace. So like what Minister Rose May did to one person. She killed that person. <laughs> she roasted the man. Imagine somebody praying in tongues and you collected their phone. Ah. Somebody was praying in tongues and you took the phone. Well, for your lack of knowledge. So you know, I remember she was coming for a meeting. I don't know what meeting she was coming for, maybe a leader's meeting or something. And she just was just praying in tongues as a gentle lady that she is. And the person took her phone. Or was it a bag or something? Was it a bag? And she did not stop praying. She just went. <laughs> so I didn't even argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't argue with you. She didn't say anything. She was praying in tongues and you snapped the back and she kept going. Ah! You didn't say, Auntie, please stop. Auntie, <laughs> please. I beg, it was a mistake. Please take, take it back. It was a mistake, I beg, please. Because. And then, you know, she went. She told us about that day and she lost that phone. And did you ever bring that phone back? I think you got it back. Was it that one? Okay. And you know, about a few days later, on that same road, I think maybe the same guy was roasted. Stole another thing, because that spirit will not leave you until it ends you. But we can end it before it ends you. Glory to God. Because some spirits are, they are made for destruction. They, until they destroy someone, they will not move. When they are done, they will not say we are done. They will move to the next, next prey. And I think a few days on the same spot, the, the robber was burned to death, was roasted by Rose, <laughs> Rose's angels, or whoever, and died. So there are people you can offend. I'm not saying offend anybody because you. They don't write it in the, in, face, in the face like this. It might be a 10 year old your friend, but the 10 year old is so high in the spirit. <laughs> and you, you are a 40 year old. Not no category, no, they, can, they don't have category to rate you in the spirit. There's no, you are on ground level. There are some children, very strong spirits. I was telling you on Wednesday. Very strong spirits that if you try them, you will hit your head against rock. So don't be that person that is playing smart. You are playing smart. Smart. Say, so, well, I just, I just want to get that money. Once I get that money, I move. So you are broken many hearts. Took their money. Took their possession. Some of them, you took their virginity. Some of them, you took important things. Some people, they will lie, lie, lie. And then, take your money, travel abroad, then ghost you. And then you want to go with it. No, you can't. So, there are people you must not joke with. When people come into your life, particularly when they are rushing you too much, tell them to relax. Relax. Okay, let me check you. Let me set you. In the spirit, where are you coming from? Where have you been? Who has laid hands on you? How many shrines have you entered? So it is until you marry them, finish that you now see incisions all over their body. Say, eh, have I married a God? 
because if you are a good woman now, I mean, you are not supposed to see your other, your spouse's body until you marry them. Some of you will be shocked. <laughs> when you get married, they move clothes, incisions all over the chest. Say, ah! Now, some of you the solution to so that. That's why we should see them before. They, no. Pray! The one that knows all things, he has seen everything, he can tell you. You see, sometimes something looks so good. Ah! And then you are, you are trying to understand why God is saying no. Has that been before in life? The yes. thing is so good, so perfect in your judgment. And God is saying, ah, you just can't sit really down in your spirit. Something is just off. I don't know. This guy looks perfect. He has future plans. He has dreams. He has purpose. He has destiny. He's going somewhere. He has car. He has money. He has everything I want. But somehow, God is saying no. It might be that his chest is full of incision. You will just wake up wedding wedding day or wedding night. Ah, Omo. <laughs> By then it's too late. And me, I will join you. I've told you, I cannot stay from my will to marry. I will try, I will help you, I will guide you, I will use all the signals to tell you that this thing I'm not to. but if you tell me that's the person, no wala. I will join you. After that, it's your business. So, before people come into your life, ask the Holy Spirit. He knows more than you. He has all the details. And I'm emphasizing on this word, all the details. Because some of you need details to trust God. And it's so sad. So, when God gives the address, phone number, everything, you will not believe. But if God says, don't go for it, say, no, 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 you have to convince me. Why? Why not? He's a good God who will convince you. But if he sees that you are too heavy all the time, he will not always do that. Because it tells you once, twice, and you don't listen, it just leaves you alone. So, the Holy Spirit of God is omniscient in nature. He has all the details. He knows all things. So what's your duty? Trust him. Ask him questions. He is willing to guide you. That is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us today. To guide us. He is God's voice to us. He is God's direction to us. You might be asking, how does the Holy Spirit sound? It doesn't sound special. He, the voice comes usually from your spirit. He takes possession of your spirit and speaks through. It's like you are the one speaking to yourself. Sometimes you'll be calling your own name. But it's the spirit of God speaking through you. And that is why you should pray a lot in tongues. If you are here this morning, now, if you are here out, you, you must be able to pray in tongues. There's no way you would have Petra without that. But if you are not a member of our church and you are following this morning, and you can pray in tongues, and you are born again, you can meet any of our leaders today. They, they, they pray with you. That's what the advantages of praying in tongues. When you pray a lot in tongues, you are praying beyond the scope of your reasoning. So you are not only asking the Holy Spirit for things that you are thinking about. The things you are not thinking about but that he knows about. He is going to give you instructions about them. That's why pray a lot in the Spirit. Pray a lot. I keep telling you this. Pray a lot in it. Let the majority of your prayer time. Don't be this asking, 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 asking person. Every time you are asking something, asking something. Lord, you remember that thing you have not given me. That thing you have not given me. It's day two you have not given me. Day three you have not given me. Two weeks has passed, Lord. Can't you see my Christ? Can't you see I'm suffering? Can't you see? Can't you see? You're always insulting God. They can't you see? Lord, did you, did you read the news today? No, you did not read. Lord, this is what Asu is doing to me. He can see it. Pray a lot in this spirit. Your life is way better off when you do so. You are always steps ahead of the devil. Because he doesn't know what to discuss with the Lord. So you are steps ahead. Steps ahead. And that's part of his ministry to us today. As you pray in the spirit, the Lord begins to lay impressions on your heart. You see, if you are someone that prays a lot in tongues, don't joke with impressions. So, these are teaching already. I think I'm going to teach in the next series. But it's okay. 
I know you need it now. Impressions. If you are someone that plays a lot in tongues, when you have impressions, don't joke with them. Sometimes you just think it's just me thinking. No. Because you have so soaked yourself with the activity of the spirit so that the thoughts of the spirit are now overwhelming you. They are now becoming dominant impressions around you. You move around, you have that impression. What is that? What is an impression? I don't know how to describe. I don't know how to describe it to you. <laughs> What's an impression? You just have this knowing. You have this feeling. You can't explain it. Sometimes you can't put it to words. That's why I told you earlier. Sometimes you have something that is so good and perfect, and you are just having this this weight in your spirit. That anytime they mention that thing, you just have this weight. If you are someone that puts a lot in the spirit, you will see about the experience. And that is primarily how God guides through the inward witness. Before God will come and speak to me about your matter, most likely he has spoken to you, but you do not listen. So you, you want pastor to always say it. You want to have counseling. Sometimes you don't need counseling. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't need counseling. All you need to do is to trust God more from your inside. Now, can you now come and then say, I should confirm what you have heard? No problem. But God is always speaking to you. So the inward witness is how God primarily speaks. And that inward witness is an impression. Many times. And you see, if you want to actually follow divine leading, follow that leading thought that begins to come in your heart. Now, if you are praying over a matter and you don't know what God's position is about that matter, just pray a lot in tongues. Just keep praying in tongues. Just pray. Now, I'm not going to pray in 30 minutes and then you go and forget about the matter. No. Come back again at night. Pray about it. The next morning, pray about it. Sometimes you can keep the thoughts in your heart as you pray. But you are not really saying, God, this is what I want. No. It's just, okay, maybe you want to get a new gadget. Some of you are not even asking, does God want to get a gadget now? Even though we are getting our gadgets, is it your own now? <laughs> sometimes God wants to say, you could know, use this money for this now. But you are so pressured. You want to get your own because all your friends have gadgets. So, you are not entirely saying, God, I want to get a gadget now. What do, what do you want to say? Sir, you want to get it. So, go and get it now. <laughs> you want to get a gadget. This morning is with me. I don't know. What's the best thing I should do with it? Then you are praying. As you are praying, praying, praying and praying, gradually, there becomes a thought that begins to reoccur in your mind. Something keeps hammering gradually after a while that thought becomes the leading thought in your mind you see when you have leading thought follow it after you have prayed then you have one random thought and say ah i'm thinking of this thing mm, it's nice then you go for it no after you have prayed if there is a leading thought sometimes it's a name sometimes it's the name of a place sometimes you're seeing a picture a picture keeps flashing keeps flashing keeps flashing keeps flashing after you prayed or while you are praying, as you are doing all of those things, God is trying to prompt you. Now, sometimes, depending on how you follow God, you don't mean to whine, whine, whine so much like that until God tells you what you want to do. But particularly when it comes to tough decisions, tough decisions, when it, that's why in this church, if you want to go to a relationship, you pray for six months. At least the first two months, you are praying alone as the man. Now, if you now deceive me after two months, that's now your business. If you cannot get God to speak to you in two months, it's your problem. But we don't stop about two months. We give you another extra month in case you missed it. All that was in your mind was love. After two months, love will remove. Third month, start a relationship. Pray again. We now tell you, pray for another three months. Even after the relationship has started. And that's why we say we will not announce it because something can still happen. Pray again. The more you pray, except you want to deceive yourself. And there's nobody you're trying to impress. I told you, when it comes to six months, why are you trying to impress? Max, you'll be that guy that started six months and never finished. That's your record. Finish. What else? But you have saved yourself a life of torment. Some people think because they start six months, they must finish it. It's not a must. I have people that not finish six months. Nobody did one month. After one month, they say, Pastor, don't mind me, I was seeing double when I was. <laughs> I was seeing double. And I never scold them. I never say, ah, hey, hey, but why why were you not? No, 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 no. That is why we are praying. 
You see, don't be scared of the outcome of prayer. Don't be scared of what God tells you to do in prayer. Why did you pray? That is why some people don't want to pray because they are scared God will tell them to do what they do, what, what, what they don't want to do. You know, sometimes you want to do something, say, and they say, "Why not pray about it?" You don't want to pray because you know the way they say, "Father," you say, "My my son," just <laughs> you know my answer already. <laughs> you know what I want to say. Now. Before you go to that point, do you know you had your answer already? The moment you think of something, like some of you now, you know if you tell pastor something, he will likely say no. You have your answer. You don't need to pray. But you still want to come and tell me so that you can hear the no from me. Okay, now, no. <laughs> the way God leads us, he is always guiding us. Because he always has information. He, the Holy Spirit of God is the greatest informant in the world. He can, he can inform you. That's why we are praying tongues. You know, you hold the hand of someone we are going to do that as a place this morning. When you hold the hand of someone, he can give you information about the person beside you. He's an informant. He can tell you what is wrong with them, what is going on with them. And he doesn't just do that because he's the spirit of wisdom. He will tell you what to do to help that person. What the person must do. So, if you are praying for six months as an example now, it's not the most you finish that six months. There are many people that do not finish this month. It's in the six months that you are scattered. I give glory to God. I glorify God that is scattered. The God that scatters and gathers. Blessed be his name. <laughs> Because that's the purpose. You bring a religion to our church. Like I've told you, if you come to this church with a relationship, we will test it with prayers. And don't be scared. Don't be scared of what the outcome will be. You went to pray to God and you are he gave you something to do, you didn't do it. Why did you pray? Some people are scared of the outcome of prayer. Don't be scared of the outcome of prayer. No. The reason you pray is so that you can receive direction. If you actually pray so that you can receive direction, then be ready to receive whatever the Lord says in prayer. The Lord says, oh boy, you pray for three months, but now follow. Say, oh Lord, can't, can't we find a way? Let's just find a way. I pity you. Even if the old one has, has talked about you before, and I said, oh, oh. Let me not mention any name. So that I will not, I don't know the name of people that are in relationship already. Well, I'm not praying something bad happens to you guys. Say, ah, everybody's already healing, healing, because in this church, secrets never, I don't know how you could do it. But people can't keep secrets because you are the ones always opening yourselves. So before they finish this one, everybody's already saying, mm, 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 this one, that one, that one. Do you know they can keep waiting for life and I never announce it? Because it never happened. Because somewhere prayer drowned it. And let it be so to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So, uh, but when are they going to announce people? So announce what? <laughs> Is it Fabrizio Romano? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> are we announcing a new signing? No. That's why I always tell you, I tell my guests clearly, anything I don't announce is not announced. Until I say, now we present to you these two people in a relationship. Until it is announced, nothing exists. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> is, is soaking in the word. <laughs> so if you like, sing all the names in the world. Yes, Match them together. <laughs> Match make them together. Call them together. Until I announce it, it doesn't exist. They have announced you now. What should I announce again? <laughs> what should I announce? His marriage plans. No, give her the ring first. You both are ready now. So, what? Glory to God. <laughs> Don't worry, focus. So, those of you that are praying six months already, those of you that came this just relationship, we told you, we will test it. We don't know where you are coming from. Some of you found a relationship to iniquity. You slept together one day, then you liked each other. Say, ah, don't you think that we can 
did you enjoy the sex? I enjoyed. Did you enjoy the tour? So that that means you can have a good relationship. So who are that foolish? So we will bring sex. We help you. We use prayer. We put prayer inside. All fire inside like this. Then you start thinking as you think, because anybody that thinks like that is thinking backwards. So when you bring your darling relationship to us, we don't care. We don't care. We will pray about it. And if you are sincere in your prayers, it's just that some people don't want to, they don't like to admit it. And what, what do you stand to lose? Six months, no problem. Go again. You that did the first one can do the second one. <laughs> some people now want to force the six months over the line. Let's shall finish so that the world will not say no. Who are you trying to impress? When you are following God's plan for your life, the last thing you must think of doing is impressing anybody. You are following God. That is why success in the plan of God is that you have fulfilled the plan. It's not who was impressed. It's not who hated you. They say, ah, ah, Omar, you are good. No. If God does not call you good, you are not good. That's why the measure of success in following God's plan the same with ministries. Some people measure ministry success by the number of crowd they have, the number of cars that are packed in there, whatever. Those things are good. The number of branches they have, no problem. They are beautiful things. But did God send you? He will only measure your success based on what He sent you to do. So, some people are trying to impress, you are trying to impress people and show that you are also in a relationship or you also finished six months because, well, it's an achievement. And then you are trying to impress people. You are trying to satisfy people's curiosity. They are wondering. So you want to satisfy their curiosity. Say, don't worry, we are almost there. We will show you very soon. If they don't have to see anything, they don't have to see. Are you following this morning? Yes, I know I'm ministering strongly under the influence of the Holy Spirit this morning because I've not gone far in my notes. But I'm okay. Things I've seen, they are not in my notes. I'm still on the first paragraph of today's teaching. But don't worry. We are here, Abby. We are not going anywhere. We continue on Wednesday. We are almost done. We are going to pray very soon. And God is going to release supernatural direction Amen. across your ways. Amen. Because you must, you must not miss God in life. See, the moment you do, you see, it's simple. Once you miss God, you fall into the hands of the devil. And like I told you, you, don't work with someone that is working out of God's plan for, for their lives because whatever is coming for them will come for you. Once they are in the devil's territory, he can handle them. He can do whatever he pleases with them. So whatever you are doing, don't try to impress anybody. If you are praying genuinely, after one month of prayer, two months of prayer for a relationship, God would have told you, I, 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 I'm going to say God has told you now, you are not hearing your own voice. That impression you are having, are you getting me? That feeling you're having, that discomfort you. You know, sometimes the whole six months thing starts beautifully, and then after a while, the whole thing just goes cold. Ah. Yeah, what you know? I've had people who start six months for a particular lady, and in between, the Lord says, You are wasting your time. Then they switch to another lady. That's happened a number of times. So they spend longer than six months. They would have prayed for long. I imagine God just going to say, just continue. <laughs> when you get tired, you will see what I prepared for you. Then after praying for a while, they will now come back and say, ah, Pastor, I think, and that is good sincerity, genuineness. Some people don't have that. You want to impress me, just say, no, don't impress me. If it is not going to work, let us know. We will break it in an Holy Ghost certified manner. In a holy manner. So they told me, they said, Pastor, I think ah, what I thought so is no more so. So, <laughs> but the Lord has shown me where I should go. Say, okay, head there. And you know what? Those people, it has ended in praise for them. Hallelujah. So, if you are sincere, in your prayer, the leading impressions, they come. The leading thoughts, they come. The leading thoughts come. When they come, follow them. 
if you are praying, pray one month, pray two months for a matter. God will speak to you about it. Impressions should come. Now, when they come, you can still spend longer to confirm those impressions, but don't force it. If it is not a, if it's a no-go area, don't force it. And like I said, even if it's about six months, if you have to come back to pastor and say, pastor, even though we have started this relationship, or even though we are about to start, I don't feel like we should go on. And I'll say, no problem. And you know what? Many times, I already know beforehand. But like I've told you, if you pray for six months, and you tell me that you see a go ahead, I will allow you. It's only a few cases I will probably stop you because I know it can be very dangerous. But most times, I believe in you. You are the one in love, not me. Before you go and think I have a personal agenda about the person. So if I say, I don't mind this person, you say, ah, Pastor, why now? At least you are married. Say, ah. Sorry. <laughs> you know, so you don't think I have any, like I used to tell you, I don't have any personal agenda for your life. I don't have any personal ambition for your life. Mine is to discover what God has in plan for your life and help you follow it without bias, without emotional. So even though I have emotional as a pastor, I'm not sure about gospel for your life. If gospel for your life means you have to leave me, leave here physically and go, I will allow you to go. So I will say, oh, you must stay here. You must stay in Nigeria. If you don't want to stay in Nigeria and God says, go abroad, when God said them abroad, they went. They are lost now. God is saying, go, go to Finland. Is that not where you want to go to? Is it God that says so? <laughs> he cannot answer me. As a man, I've been singing Finland in my ears. I don't know. I don't plan to come to Finland anytime soon. It's an impression. <laughs> or oh, you saw one of where's Jonathan? You saw one of Jonathan's. <laughs> the other guy is one posting different parts of the world. So maybe one day he just posted Finland. And Pastor Mosa, ah, what, what was that? He said Helsinki. Is that, what, is that what the capital of Finland? You don't know. It should be Helsinki now. I believe I'm right. I should be right. I know that I was I know culture and capital very well. Say, ah, that, uh, what is that? I love that city. Oh, that's not what is going on in your life. So my duty is to help you discover what God wants you to do and follow it. Help you follow it. Mine is to help you discover who God wants to marry and then help you fulfill it. I don't have any plan for you. Glory to God. So sometimes if I discover who God wants you to be with and you are not seeing it, I can just pull you a little. I just say, just follow me. Let's go somewhere together. <laughs> so as we go, I say, ah, meet my, my daughter. Meet my, meet my son this. Yeah. From there, I will just, I will hands up. And then let the Holy Ghost take over. And if he, if he doesn't want to take over, then you're on your own. God will find you another one. Don't worry. There's not only one person for you in the world. Praise God. So even if that one person rejects you, after doing two months, three months, prayer, the person says no. Move. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So as you pray, we're going to pray shortly. We'll pray for about five minutes or ten minutes. Then we'll give edification because I sense, because that's what happens when there is a teaching the anointing for it is in the atmosphere there is an anointing for divine direction this morning some of you are so confused you see how clarity will be jumping at you this morning because God's spirit is in you doesn't want to leave you helpless there are some decisions that some of you, the way I spoke this morning is like the thing was just hitting you like that in your heart like I was talking to you you don't need any more confirmation. This is the last one because you already have that impression. You know, but you are still struggling, 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 struggling. You see, the moment you begin to struggle with things, pay attention to it. Is it that God doesn't want to do it, or there is an opposition that don't, that wants to stop what God wants you to do? Sometimes it doesn't mean if you are struggling with the thought, doesn't mean that God doesn't want it. Don't make that mistake. Sometimes it's what God wants, but there's a struggle over it. So, the way God needs when we pray, the more you pray, it can just be like a thought. A thought. A thought. It just keeps coming. Just keeps coming. 
just keeps coming. Sometimes you have even left the place of prayer. You are just on your own. The picture just flashes back. Then you go again. Flashes back. Then you go again. Before you know what's happening, what was difficult for you to follow now becomes easy. That's what prayer does. You see, when if you are struggling to follow the will of God, pray. If you know the will of God and you, you are finding it difficult to accept it, pray. The more you pray, there becomes an ease. There becomes an ease in your spirit. And what is happening is that your spirit is, is being weighed down from that concern, that doubt, so that it can align with the spirit of God on that matter. So when you, when you start praying, there is a struggle. You know that this is the right thing. But there is a struggle. Pray about it. The more you pray about it, the weight in your spirit or, or your mind or anything keeps being dropped so that there can be an alignment with how God is thinking about the matter. That's why you can't, you can't be a not praying believer. You can't, it's like two opposites that don't meet. You are a believer and you don't pray. Doesn't make sense. How are you going to activate the direction, the leading, the ministry of the Spirit within you? How are you going to do it? Because it says when I pray in tongues, I'm speaking to God. I'm not speaking to men. It's only when I bring forth interpretation that men can understand me. And I first care about my conversation with God before men. Because I must talk to God first before I talk to men. Before I go about my business, before I give answers to people, I must talk to God. I must converse with God. I must hear what he has to say. As I told you, wake up in the morning, ask him, what's for today? Where should I go today? What things should I say today? Sometimes someone asks you a question, you don't have to give an answer immediately. Say, don't worry, I'll get back to you. I have to consult. Say, consult with you. Tell them God. Say, ah, uh, okay. Uh, go, God, God, people. Yes. So you have finished talking to everybody, but you have not spoken to God. You finish talking to the girl, you've preserved your future ambition. You say, well, this is my plan. This is my plan, you know, like, like, a, like, a, like a coach that wants to buy a player. Say, this is where I'm going to be using you. I'll use you as a striker. Then when you say, you see, my plan for you is when we get married, we we'll just travel to Helsinki, and then when we get to Finland, you know, you know we'll just be, be enjoying ourselves, and then, you know, we can now look at it. We can look for one church. We join first. We build our ministry. Before you know what's happening, then we start our own ministry. And you see, when you have, but you have not said a single thing to God, you have finished the plans with the girl. The, the plans I have for you, the way I'm going to destroy you with money. Don't let them, <laughs> don't let them destroy you with money. I beg you, only if you tell the story. <laughs> the way I will spoil you with money. Ah, the way I'm going to, but God is giving us this girl is the one that will spoil you. It will spoil your destiny. You are finished presenting the plans. You are finished doing those things. Even now today, jobs you want to apply for. Say, well, it's not just to apply for jobs. Pastor has said, he has declared the word. There are jobs you must not apply for. The moment you apply for them, they've taken something from you. People that have gotten scammed by certain things. They should have heard from God. The story of a young lady that died some time ago. You, the strong believer, must not have that kind of foolish debt. Let me use that word. Because there's no way you can go that far from the story ahead. You cannot go that far and the Spirit of God will not be shouting at you that, Mama, turn back. Where are you going to? That's why we tell you, cultivate that relationship with the Lord. Have it strong. Let it be there. So that even when everybody around you is drowning, following a particular pattern, that thing is so strong that beats yourself so much that you can't just join them. You just have this different thing that's so no, 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 no. I can't join. I don't know why, but you guys should just go on. What do you want to apply for? Sometimes, you know, the other day I was correcting the technical ministry and I said, I just, I just saw that link. They sent many links. I don't click all the links. I just clicked that one. I checked. Ah, when I saw certain things, I said, no. So I said, go and check this thing online. I checked. By the time I saw, I don't know if they, are, they can say they are genuine, but they are not really genuine. They are asking for BVN, asking for bank account, asking for things and some very sensitive things. Ah, and I looked them out. I didn't see any trace. The real company is in Norway, close to Finland. It's not far from Finland. There's a real company. It's close to where you are living. <laughs> so 
you can be you are, you are in a rush. You just want to apply. Relax. You want to apply, you're having a strain. Check it. What is going on? What is going on? God cares that much. He wants to be involved in every detail of your life. Because he has information for every detail. He has detailed information. Rise on your feet this morning. Let's pray for a few minutes. We're going to pray. We're going to join our hands and pray this morning. As we, as we pray this morning, we, we believe strongly that in the atmosphere this morning is divine guidance. Man cannot live. It's like you are trying to run, you are trying to run a gadget without the manufacturer's prescriptions. That's how you, you behave when you want to live your life without God's direction. God created you. God made you. So he has the best plan for your life. He has the best path you should follow. He has the best career path for you that will not, that will not hinder you from being what he wants you to be for him. So join us this morning and pray in the Holy Ghost. You cannot pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray to the Lord. Don't sing. It's no time to sing. Don't, don't sing. When they say pray, don't sing. Pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, we are going to pray for about five minutes. As we do that, the Lord will increase sensitivity in this building. Some of you, certain instructions will come to you that you must take down. And after that, we are going to join our hands. We are going to pick up in twos and give direction, give education, because in this atmosphere, supernatural direction is present. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Because we are, we are studying about the Holy Spirit and His work to us today. His ministry to us today. What He does for us today. Sensitivity is being increased. Sensitivity is being increased. Sensitivity is being increased as we pray. Some of you have made certain decisions that is almost irreversible because you have gone very far. But the Lord is saying, We can help you. He can help you. The Lord is saying, Something can still be done about it. Some of you have gone very far. You have gone very far. Sensitivity is increasing. I saw you are praying. Sensitivity is increasing. Sensitivity is increasing as the break. You can insult the other back. The mistake you can make is looking around. When we are praying, don't look around. We are talking about destiny related matters. We are talking about your future here. There is no way you can live life outside your creator. You can't live life outside the one that gave you life. The one that gave you life has a plan for you. The one that gave you life has a template he wants to run with. He has the best decisions. And don't forget, he has the details. He has the details. He has the details. He has the details. So as you pray this morning, he will begin to give you details. Some of you, he will comfort your hearts in those decisions that are made. Ensure that you are praying. There are about two minutes more to pray. As you pray, direction will come. Direction will come. Sensitivity is increased. As you pray this morning, it becomes even more difficult for you not to follow God. Because the Lord will compel you. He will lead you in that path. He will sort out all those options that are contrary to his will. Like Paul said, he 
is the one that wills in us and gives us the power to do his will. He wills in us and he gives us the ability to do his will. Said he's the one working in us. He wills in us both to will and to do of his will. He said he's the Lord working in you to will and to do of his own pleasure. You were made for his pleasure. You were made for his will. He gave you life. So you cannot live life outside him. You can't live life without him. No. You can't live life without him. So we see direction. Increase in sensitivity. Increase in sensitivity. Those words that God has spoken to you for you, take them. A few seconds more to pray. And after this, direction is coming. So you can just pray up in twos. You can pray up in twos. Because now that you are full of sensitivity, you can pick impressions about others. Now leaders, you can go towards the back. Since we have a majority of people at the back that are probably not members and all of that. Leaders, pastors, ministers, leaders, you can just go towards the back. Others, you can hold hands wherever you are. Just hold yourself in twos. In twos. Just in twos. Supernatural direction will come. 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 Guidance will come. The way to go about it is that as you pray in tongues, the Spirit of God will give you words for the person you are holding. If a member of the church, you know how it is done. There will be direction. So you have to edify that person. You have to edify that person. If you came from home with someone, or if, if you are a relative to someone, you are siblings, couple or so, don't hold yourselves. Hold someone else. Hold someone else. So that you don't shut the flow of direction because of your familiarity. As you pray in tongues, instruction will come. Direction will come. Guidance will come. God will give you instructions for the person you are holding. And your responsibility is to give those instructions. Your responsibility is to give those directions. Your responsibility is to speak those words. Because God never wants to leave us without direction. He never wants to leave us without help. So what you're going to do now is as you're holding that person, the Spirit of God, because He has the details, will begin to reveal things to you about that person you are holding. If you are going online, get a partner. If you are online, if you are in Ife, you are together so you can work on that. If you are online, get into the DMs, get a partner. Direction is flowing in this place this morning. It's an offshoot of the life of God. It's a part of the package of salvation. It's a part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to you today. It's a part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to you today. That you enjoy direction. That you are not without direction. So what's going to happen now is instructions will come. Begin to release those instructions. Directions will come. Instructions will come. Receive those instructions. Take those instructions. Sensitivity over the house. That is it this morning. Sensitivity. Sensitivity. The atmosphere is sensitive. 
If you are done with someone, you can move to someone else. Just have a few more minutes to do that. Sensitivity. Give instructions. Give direction. Some of them is just the words you speak this morning that will liberate them. That will release them. That will free them from those shackles of indecision, of confusion, of darkness. Serving the light for them. God has given it to you. So you speak forth the light. You speak forth the light. Is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us today. It is part of his characteristics, his responsibilities. He is omniscient. He says the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The, the Spirit knows all things. Say, so what man knows the things of a man? Except the Spirit of man that is in him. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. The things of God are the things of your destiny. They are the things of his will for your life. He created you so he has the best in store for you. He has the best in plan for you. He has the best choice for you. He has the best decision for you. He knows what is best for you. You can't live life without him. You can't try to do life without him. No, you can't. You can't say it's my life. It's not your life. He created you. If he created you, he must have a plan. He must have a plan. He must have a plan. He must have a path he wants you to follow. So you should listen to him. And he's bringing someone your way this morning that will give you the direction. He's bringing someone your way that will give you the direction. He's putting his words on the lips of somebody for you. If you are praying for someone, or if you are edifying someone, ensure that you are also edified. Especially if it's someone you believe can. So people don't know how to, you have to learn it. That's why we come to church. And that's what we do in this kind of gatherings. There is sensitivity in the atmosphere. There is direction. Supernatural direction. Alignment with the plan of God. Alignment with this plan. Supernatural direction. Supernatural direction. Supernatural direction. Supernatural direction. I'll give you two more minutes so that we can take our offerings and close. Direction. Precision. From now, your decisions become accurate. No errors. No errors. No errors. No mistakes. No mistakes. From now, you are spot on. You can know what to do. You can pick up impressions. You can pick impressions and run with them. You can pick up direction and know what to do. And know where to head. Know how to go about your life. You are not without help. You are never without help. You are never without direction. God is there always. We said He's present everywhere. The Holy Spirit is present always. Present everywhere. Even at that point you are planning to make those mistakes, He's there. Guiding you. One more minute. To give edification. To bless another. Instructions will come. Some of you will receive some personal instructions. Personal revelation of the things that God has in store for you. Some of your clarity will come. It just becomes clear. It becomes clear becomes clear so be some decisions you'll be struggling with all you just needed was this morning's message to clarify things for you to clear things for you to clear things for you there is sensitivity in the atmosphere there is direction here 
It is here. It is here. You can begin to round up. Begin to round up. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. I believe we were blessed this morning. Let's come back to our seat. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the light in your word. Thank you for the clarity that we received. Thank you for divine direction. Thank you, Lord, for helping us this morning to see us and to see your your plans and your wills for us just exactly as you want us to see them. Father, we ask that you help us not to make mistakes in the name of Jesus. That as we go about taking decisions, as we go about living our life, we live our life exactly as you want us to do it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your son, the vanguard over this house that you've used to bless us this morning. We pray, Lord God, that you strengthen him in return in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Why are we so cold? Is it because of the word we received? Do you want to dance? Yes. Want to rejoice? Yes. Okay, we're going to be giving our offering this morning. Let's package our offering even as we give to God. Hallelujah. Let's package our offering. It's time to give. I've always told us your giving is how you show God that you honor him. The scripture says, bring into the house your first fruit. And it follows with an instruction that you will be increased. It follows with a promise that you will be increased. Your ban will be increased. So anytime you give to God, you honor him with your giving. And he has promised in return that he will always increase your storehouse. So I want us to give this morning with the assurance that God is indeed our source and he will never allow us to run dry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to take our confession this morning, even as we again tell God that this is God's word to me and I'm saying it back to God just as he has said it. Hallelujah. Father God, you are my source, unlimited, unfailing. He that has a shepherd suffers no lack. Because the Lord is my good shepherd, I shall not lack for anything good. Because he always causes me to have a sufficiency in all things and abound to every good work. Thank you, Lord, for increasing me and all that pertains to me, for blessing me richly and making me a big blessing to a lot of people, to your glory, to your honor, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Eros Nation, what are we seeing? We are getting our buildings. We are getting our apartments. We are getting our lands. We are getting our houses. We are getting our vehicles. We are getting our equipment. Everything we need to do the will of God and to enjoy life on a high level after a godly sort and for a good witness. All our bills, all our debts are being reduced and are being eliminated. We claim abundance and extra community and we are paying off everything very quickly. The Lord is bringing us into the best shape of our life thus far. He is giving us health to enjoy all his resources he is bringing into our hands. Seeds, even some great big Ropa Chung seed. We receive them and we sow the seeds where it shows and where it directs. The heavens are giving rain and the earth is yielding its best to us. What do we see? A great harvest. Our seed sown is blessed this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's have our seats even as we take the announcement. God bless us. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. All right, very quickly, we'll take uh, announcements, even as the offering basket is being passed. On behalf of the Vanguard, I say welcome to Herald International Christian Center. 
Oyo Capital. Our vision is to arouse the life of God in Christ in all things, and our mission is to raise the total man in Christ. According to God's eternal plan, a man who will rule in heaven and on earth in things both spiritual and natural. Praise God. All right, our weekly activities remain the same. On Sundays like today, we have our service by 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. On Wednesdays, we have our music service by 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. On Thursdays, we have our fasting as a church till at least 3 p.m. On Saturdays, we have evangelism two hours between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Praise God. All right, upcoming programs for the month of August. We have our prayer thon. Our six, six hours um, by monthly prayer drive on the 26th of August. That's this Friday, 26th of August. And it starts by 10 p.m. Praise God. Our blessing and impartation service holds on the 31st of August. Blessing and impartation service as well as petrol graduation. Praise God. Stewards are reminded of their meeting after service today. Sunday school continues next Sunday. Members of the follow-up ministry will meet with the follow-up head for an important meeting. Stewards who have not yet gone through catatismos will have a meeting with Minister Kufri after service. Ministers in training session will hold after all other meetings today. We have a telegram channel that houses all of the teachings of the church from inception till date. The link to the channel is bit.ly forward slash HICC media. Also, we have a telegram channel that houses excerpts of our Vanguard teachings. The link to that channel is bit.ly slash Christosin clips. Praise God. Um, the book written by our Vanguard, Eden, God's Eternal Plan, is still on for sale. Reach out to Pastor MK to get your copy as it would greatly improve your Bible study. Praise God. Anyone interested in joining the church, reach out to any of our pastors. We have Pastor Mkwai Kanambo, Pastor Emejo Odofa, Pastor Kola Defani, Pastor Emmanuel Oyeni. Praise God. A reminder that to meet with any of our vanguards, you have to fill a form to secure a swift meeting. The link to the meeting is tinyurl.com forward slash meet with vanguards tinyurl.com forward slash meet with vanguards praise god Amen. upcoming birthdays for the month of august tomorrow august 22nd we have um steward blessing nelson's birthday <laughs> on tuesday august 23rd we have steward david asikbo's birthday <laughs> And then to round it up for the month, we have Steward Victor Esang, August 25th. <laughs> Upcoming weddings, the union between Minister Tobilo Bafabumi and Steward Awekayo Day of Satellite Community will hold this year, September 17th, in Ibadan. If you have any contribution or gifts, kindly reach out to Steward Miracle. Praise God. Please let's rise and we have our Vanguard bless us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's close service this morning. I believe you got a lot of instructions from the Lord. Please, if those ones were for you, like I said. What's that? Oh, really? okay. Like I said, there were things that I was not planning to say. A good number of things, but... I believe God was pointing our attention to key things. It might not be for everybody, but there are certain people that those words are for. What you should do to God's word when you hear it is to take action. Like I always tell you, it will be very unwise of you to hear the right thing and go and do contrary or and still insist on what you think is right. That's now foolishness. And the Bible says, such a man is the man that looks at his face in the mirror and walks away not making adjustments. So when the word of God comes to you, make adjustments and take your prayer life more seriously. More seriously. You can't be an overcoming Christian without a strong prayer life. You can't be. There's no way. The devil will cheat you. So please ensure that you take today's teaching seriously. On Wednesday, we're going to continue from where we stopped. We are still looking at the qualities, the characters of the Holy Spirit. We'll look at it more on Wednesday. Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you winning souls? What's the response? They're just laughing at you. Yesterday, instead of you winning souls in the evening, you were winning your own soul. Yesterday, we had our second hangout. 
after the service today, I will take an attendance of those that attended and that did not attend. It's me and you today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Today is Steward Grace Fon's birthday. Where is she? She's not here. She's outside. She's here. He's here. He or she is here. He is here. All right. We celebrate you. So what grace is not close by, we celebrate you. And we have other birthdays coming this week and beyond. Praise God. All right. Let's quickly welcome first timers this morning. If it's your first time in our church, Herald International Christian Center with your capital here, please, we would like to recognize you. You can please wave. Be bold to wave. And we would like to welcome you. Anybody like that here? We have one person, two people over there. Please, if you are close to them, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Okay, one person over there. One person over there. We celebrate you. Thank you for coming. This is Herald International Christian Center. And our vision is arousing the life of God in Christ. Our mission is to raise spiritual things. Please, after the service, the follow-up mission will get to meet with you briefly. So please don't be in such a hurry to leave. And we'll also have you come back again. And if the Lord is putting your heart to join our church, why not? Feel free to join our church as the Lord leads you. If you are a second timer, this is your second time coming to our church, please wave also. We would like to recognize you. Anyone like that here? A second timer. You came once. You are coming again. Someone over there. We welcome you yet again. One of our pastors will get to meet with you. As a church, we, we are always open to new members. We have no closed membership. So if you want to join our church, we never assume membership like we always say. And church attendance, no matter how long it is for, is not the same as church membership. So please do see any of our pastors today. If the Lord is putting your heart to join our church, uh, if you needed a word from the Lord, like I used to say, here is the word from the Lord to join. Glory to God. Some of you, you need this kind of environment where the word of God is being taught and your life is being ordered. This is the place to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, before we close service, I want to do something very important. I want to announce the theme for our coming Congress. <laughs> when it is, our Congress is holding from the 2nd to the 6th of November. So we have just September and October to plan. And um, part of it, it will be a 50-day countdown and prayer tower. We have 50 days of prayers ahead of the Congress. When you see great meetings, great meetings are forged in the place of prayer. Did you see how MMC was? It was our prayers. We prayed. We came here praying two hours, two days. Everybody did it. You know, so we, we, we wouldn't have expected less than what God in our midst. It wasn't, wasn't me. It wasn't just me. It wasn't because I was well prepared. It was because we all were prepared. And I learned that early that, that lesson early in life, I've been planning meetings for about 10 years now and more. So I know the power of prayer. 50 days of unbroken prayers every day till the Congress. And you see how mighty the hand of God will be at the Congress. All right, are you ready for the word now? Yes. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. The theme for the Congress came to me some months ago, up to three or four months ago been long and that's how God prepares us who wants to guess where it is Acts 7 verse 1 now from um, chapter 6 Stephen was called to do a defense based on the accusations he was accused that he was desecrating the temple and then he was speaking against the laws of Moses so verse 1 of chapter 7 then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran, and said to him, Get out of your country and from your relatives and come to a land that I will show you. Glory to God. Our theme for this Congress is the God of glory. Oh. Hallelujah. It will be a very power packed time. I know you don't know what is coming for you, and I will not tell you yet. But the God of glory will show up big time at the Congress. Be strong in teaching, 
and you'll be strong in the expression of his glory. In case you don't know, his glory is in healings, miracles, deliverance, blessings in their number. So get ready, the God of glory. The planning committee will let you know when the 50 days come down. It will start next month. So get ready for it, for a great one. Glory to God. You know, one of my daughters that is not a part of this ministry, she already called me. She spoke last week. She said, what is the date for Congress? I told her, she is coming for the full Congress time. So you should be there. Glory to God. And by then, it will be more than this. Hallelujah. All right. So let's close service this.